Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at Kamal. This is a way to deploy your Rails applications where you don't even need to initially configure the servers. You run the tool, the tool pings the server and says, hey, do you have Docker installed? If it does, great. If not, let's install Docker first. And it steps through each of the items iteratively until your server is configured. And then it proceeds to deploy the container with your application in it. Super cool. Always works except for if you need to deviate from the tutorial I'm making here, in which case it's not going to work until you spend a bunch of hours trying to figure out how to make it work. As is always the case, I just want to make that disclaimer up front. These things work under ideal conditions. Aside from that, anyone who tells you these things are super easy to use every single time, not being totally honest with you. So in this case, we're going to be deploying something using a uh, SSL certificate from Cloudflare. We're gonna be using Cloudflare for the domain hosting. I tried to do our own self-deployed certificates, couldn't figure it out. So we're just gonna be using Cloudflare for this one. We're also gonna be using Docker Hub where we create a personal access token. The reason why we do this is because we need a way to log into our Docker Hub account because that's where we're gonna be putting our Docker images. When we use a password, the person that compromises our password then has access to our entire Docker Hub account. If we use a password or a personal access token, we can then tell them, hey, uh, I don't like the way you spelled Kamal. I'm going to go ahead and just revoke your access. And now they no longer have access and they never had access to our password to begin with. So we can then go ahead and just create a new access token, call it Kamal, and then go ahead and generate it like that. That's going to give us a key here that we need to put in our application. The other thing we're going to be doing, I'm going to be using DigitalOcean for this. I have a referral code in the video description. You can use this. It gives you $200 credit for 60 days which basically means you get two months free hosting. Afterwards, if you spend $25, they give me $25, so it benefits me just trying to be transparent about that. But it's just a nice way to test this stuff out. You can also use something like Hertzner or whatever else to host your servers. It's ultimately up to you. The main benefit of Kamal is the fact that you can deploy this to pretty much any server. So you're not locked into like vendor fees like uh, you know AWS, where when you try and pull your data out, they go, oh, you have five megabytes worth of data. That's going to cost you like $150 because we don't want you to leave. Because if you leave, then we don't make money from you anymore. Okay. I think that's effectively all the stuff we have to talk about up front. Here's the application we're actually going to be deploying. It's using Tailwind. It's using ES Build. You don't need to use either one of those. I just did it because using like a a proc file is more involved than the basic Rails app. But the steps are exactly the same. I just wanted to show you that it works there. The only thing that's really a pain is if you have to do like Redis or Postgres or something else, then you're going to have to take additional steps outside of this tutorial. But okay, let's go ahead and let's get started. We're going to go ahead and create a new application. So I'm going to say Rails new video. I'm going to say dash J ES build dash C Tailwind. And again, this is entirely up to you. Do whatever you want. You don't have to use ES build or Tailwind. You can also omit the ES build and keep the Tailwind. I'm going to come over to our droplets here and create a new droplet. Go ahead and click create. And then I'll click on my region. I'll choose an image. I'm going with Ubuntu. I can go with 2204 if I want to. It really doesn't matter. I'll change it just so you can see it doesn't matter. I'm going to go over to regular so we can do $6 a month. I'm going to choose an SSH key and I'm going to name this. I'm going to call this Kamal-video. I'll go ahead and click create droplet while that's running. So now our Rails app is done. I'm going to CD into that video project and run a code dot to open this up in VS Code. Okay, so here's the steps you need to follow to actually set up your uh, Kamal application. First, gem install Kamal. That'll just install the gem on your system. You can then do a Kamal in it, and that'll generate three files for you. The hooks are just scripts you can run on the server. So if you have some custom logic you want to run, you can go ahead and do that using a hook. That is covered in the documentation. If you click on read the docs over at kamal-deploy.org, the docs have a hook section where you can see how to use these. Next thing we want to take a look at, we're gonna come down here to the ENV file. So this is where we need to put in a couple of keys. The first one's the master key. Come up here to config, master key, copy this, and then put this into the ENV file right here. The other one is the registry password. This is your Docker Hub. In this case, we're using Docker Hub. You can use whatever you would like. It's just wherever you put your image containers so that your server can then pull them from somewhere because you don't wanna to have to be uploading the image containers to the server every time you try and do anything, right? So we're using the personal access token for that. Again, we can always revoke this if we need to in the future. Okay, last file is the uh, config deploy.yaml. This is where you do all of your configurations. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to get rid of all of these comments. I highly encourage you to read through these, but I'm gonna get rid of them just so that we can uh, have a bit of an easier time to see what we're actually doing here. So the point of this tutorial is for you to see what a configured file looks like, not to see a bunch of comments that you get by default anyways. So let's do this. For our service name, because my domain name is called Dean Out, which we can see right here, I'm going to name my service Dean Out. For my image, this is my Docker Hub 
account name, which is Dina. And then for the uh, application we're gonna be using here, I'm just gonna call this Kamal-Video, although you could really call this whatever you want to. For the servers, we need to use our DigitalOcean droplet IP address right here, paste this in. You can verify this works by doing SSH root at and then your IP, type yes. Just make sure this works real quick and you can see we're in the server and you can see there's nothing installed here there's no docker or anything if i try and run docker we'll see it's not even installed we're not going to install it though because that's not the point we have a just blank canvas here after the server we then have our uh well we have to do a little bit more configuration so with our ip address right here this would work if we were just deploying the single thing and we didn't want to use an ssl certificate we could pretty much just deploy a server and then just go to like the ip address directly in this case i want to create what kamal calls a role for our web. This can then have multiple different hosts. I'm going to give the uh, server IP as one of the hosts, but again, you could just add a second one. It's just a, a hyphen away and then like whatever your IP address would be there. But I just want the one here and then I'm going to create some labels. For these labels, I'm going to copy and paste these over. Again, these come from a bit of Googling and a bit of documentation reading. Effectively, we're using Trafic instead of Nginx as a reverse proxy. So we, we configure Trafic HTTP routers. We name it uh, our service name underscore secure. We give it an entry points of web secure, a rule, which just has our domain name inside of the host and a TLS of true. Once that's done, we've now finished our server config. For our registry here, our username needs to be our Docker Hub account because that's the service we're using or the registry we're using. So that's our username. Our password comes from our environment variables. Then for our Rails master key, we need to tell Kamal that exists. So we just say ENV secret and we pull that out of our secrets right there. Then we need to configure our reverse proxy or traffic. So how do we do that? We just create a traffic block with some options. For the publish, we publish to port 443. That's the default SSL port. Entry points web secure address is another 443. That's just an argument we're passing to traffic so it knows what the web secure address is. Optionally, this is covered in the comments, but you can create a health check endpoint where you can go to like your domain name slash up to see if it's working. By default, Rails in your uh, config and routes.rb now has a uh, get up route where you can just check what the health of your app is. And then after the health check, the last thing you want to do if you want persistence, because we're using SQLite, we want to tell the uh, Kamal to create a storage volume. So this volume right here is for our Rails storage. If we come over here to our storage and we do something like a Rails G scaffold post with a title and a body of type text, and then we run a Rails DB colon migrate. When I click over here, you'll now see we have our development SQLite database in here. What we're telling it to do is to like store the storage directory outside of the Docker container. So that if we delete the Docker container, we still have the storage on the actual like server itself. So when we deploy the next server, it can just go back outside of the Docker container and it can say, okay, I still have the database here. So every time we push an update now, we persist our data. At this point, we need to do a Kamal setup and we have to hope that this works. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try this out. We're gonna run Kamal setup. The reason why I have to, uh, why I say it, we hope this works is because there's so many commands this runs, like installing Docker, where a lot of stuff can go wrong. But let's go ahead and let's configure our Cloudflare while that's running in the background. We'll come over here to DNS. In our DNS, we need a A and a C name. The A record is for our domain name. So we're just gonna come in here and edit this. We're going to change the IP address to be the new one for our server. We're going to change the proxy status to enabled because we're using our uh, SSL certificates here. We need to have proxy enabled. Otherwise, Cloudflare won't work for that. Then we're going to have our C name for our www just to make sure if someone types in www.domainname.com that it works and we proxy that as well. Next, we come over to SSL and TLS. If you go into uh, right here, your SSL encryption mode, you want to set it to full, although you can also set it to flexible. The difference is end to end encryption versus encryption between the browser and Cloudflare where the Cloudflare would verify the traffic and then send unsecured traffic from Cloudflare to you. This way it's encrypted from Cloudflare to you as well. We can go over to our edge certificates. You can see here we have a couple right here and then we can scroll down. We want to always use HTTPS. You can see I toggle this 18 hours ago. Just make sure this is on. It's probably off for you. And then at that point we're done with Cloudflare. Now we just have to wait for this to finish running, which usually takes about 10 minutes. So we can see here this failed to run because it failed to fetch whatever. So let's just go ahead and SSH into our application here. So we'll try app get update and just see if that works. Again, this is one of those things where you do need to sometimes go in manually. I'm really glad it's not working right now because hopefully it means that we can, uh, uh, you're at least getting a similar experience to what I'm getting. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to do another uh, Kamal setup to see if this works this time. All right, and then after a cool, definitely not five minutes later, we have a application deployed. 
in this case, because we're using SSL, we're good to go. I want to point out a couple things though. If I come over to our uh, application, you can see here our, uh, our stuff is up and running. We can create a new post. This isn't styled the way the previous one was. The previous one was styled with uh, simply using Tailwind. Here, we're using Tailwind and ESBuild, which is not the same template, which means that our application, if we come over to posts and our index page, doesn't have the additional, uh, additional styling that the other one did. If I come into like the views, posts, and index in the previous application, and I paste in that, you can see here it has all of the uh, stuff that comes with Tailwind's uh, template. And now when we uh, deploy this again, the application will update. So if we do a camel deploy, we can then send this off. While that's running real quick, I wanna point out one other thing. All of this hinges on Rails 7.1, including the Docker file. If you don't have a Docker file, uh, I don't really know what camel is gonna be deploying for you. So in that case, you're gonna have to create a Docker file. All right, so we can see here that took almost three minutes to redeploy, but now we can come over here and refresh and you'll see we have a new type of styling here. Of course, it's just for the button and the titles that you get the idea. We can create this post and it looks a little bit better. But now you have a fully deployed application with HTTPS using Tailwind, ES Build. You can modify it locally, deploy it to your server without having to worry too much. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.